In today's episode, Chef Yasel Backman shows Elliot Moskowitz how to make his delicious glazed lamb riblets using Prairie Street Co.'s lamb riblets. When you get to the lamb riblet itself, it is so tender, it's so buttery. Boom! That's like 20 different flavors blowing up in my head. Just parting the mouth. Welcome to the Prairie Street Culinary Kitchen. I'm Elliot Moskowitz, founder and CEO, and I'm with my buddy, we've become really good buddies, Chef Yussel Backman. Chef Yussel Backman is one of the top global chefs in the kosher world, travels everywhere. We filmed together in Florida, we were in the Dominican recently. We have a lot of exciting things coming up together that you're gonna hear about. But today, we're starting with a new cut that we've never had before, lamb riblets. This has just been cut in our processing plant this week. The thing about lamb riblets, it's a phenomenal flavor to it, but if it isn't cut right, it's just too much fat fat and people get and I think we've cut it perfectly for that and once you have a perfectly cut piece of meat you bring the primo chef to show you how to do that so I've never made this or had this usually I test everything before we go on but I'm going solo I'm taking the ride with you and just strapping in and Gail so it's your show tell us what we're gonna do and uh, where we're going with this so today we are making glazed lamb riblets using Prairie Street's lamb riblets Okay. So what's the first step? Yes. So yeah. first step, we are going to season. Just very simply, we're going to keep it nice and simple. Salt and pepper. Okay, cool. That is it. So, we're using kosher salt, obviously. Yes, kosher salt, a little bit thicker. I don't like the, the super small. Keep it nice, nice pieces. Uh, same thing with the pepper as well. Don't go too round. No, and then people don't realize when they use table salt on things, they're putting literally triple or quadruple the amount of salt because yes. it's so finely grained. Yes, definitely. So we're just going to go from high. Just get a little bit all, all over. And then we're just going to flip those over and do the other side. So one thing that's really important and really beautiful about the Prairie Street lamb riblets are the way the bone is actually uh, cut. Very often lamb riblets, the bones are kind of like connected and- There's a boomerang and, and, bone. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So here, as you can see, it's really all the way through, which is really nice when you're going to plate it and serve it later. You can cut right through, portion them really easily, which is also very, very important for presentation purposes. Absolutely, and we cut this in a restaurant style format because many times people buy lamb riblets, but it's so much fat that's thrown in with that, that it's not really a useful piece of meat. So this is a fine dining experience, this yes, cut of meat. Mo most definitely. Okay. But we're bringing it to your house. That's well, what we do. Prairie Street and Yussel Backman. That's it. That's, that's all you the need. the best of the best. Okay, so now we've done the prep, the first part of the prep. Uh, what are we doing next here? We're using in an induction stovetop. Yeah, so a few pointers before we do actually jump in. Typically a braise, as you definitely know, is red wine, you know, uh, brown stock, and et cetera. As you see here, we don't have any of that. We have white wine, we, uh, Pinot Grigio, as well as some light stock. Um, and the reason for that is just because lamb is a much more delicate flavor as opposed to beef. So we're going with some lighter flavors that will complement and not mask the beautiful flavor of this incredible lamb. Um, other than that, as you can see here, there's an ingredient, I'm not sure you're familiar with it, but these are called kumquats. Kumquats is a citrus, an interesting type of citrus. It kind of tastes like an orange that has like a slight bitterness, but with a little bit more lemon. So it's a little sweet, a little sour. It's very, very fun. So we're going to be using that as our really fun ingredient um, today with this lamb. So to get started, I'm just going to go in with a little bit of oil here. If you'd like, the oil seems to be hot and just a little warm. So if you'd like to grab the tongs and grab a piece of our lamb riblets and just gently lay it away from you so you don't splatter yourself. Beautiful. That's the sound we're looking for. That's what I learned from Prairie Street is lay away. You don't have the oil and then press down so a you have a little contact and pressure Definitely. against the thing. So yeah, I actually watch our videos sometimes. So we're just going to let that go for a couple minutes and get some color. As we like to say, golden, brown, and delicious. GBD. GBD. That's what we do here. 
What's the internal temperature we're going for in something like we're that? Going, we're cooking this all the way through, so 165. Okay, good. We're going all, all the way through. Unlike lamb chops, where we like that medium rare, medium at, at most, here we're, we're braising. We're going all the way through. Right now, we're just that fat's coming out. I mean, it smells, it smells incredible. It really does. There's nothing like some of that beautiful animal fat. It's, the aroma is beautiful. Right, and that's why we really didn't have to put a lot of oil into that because that fat itself will create natural oil for us. So we're about a couple minutes. Let's go ahead and, and flip them over. So we're just gonna go for about three minutes on, on the side here. And again, they are getting braised, so you don't have to go like crazy when it comes to this here. It's not like that tomahawk or that cowboy where you, know, you really wanna lock in those flavors and whatnot, because here it's all gonna get braised. Okay, so we have been searing these for a couple of minutes now on each side, and they smell incredible, and they definitely look G B D. Golden, Golden brown, brown delicious. We're just gonna take those out and set them right there on our tray. Okay. okay, pan's hot, lamb fat is rendered, all in the pan, next in with the mirepoix. Mirepoix, here we go. So, here we have some carrot, some celery, some onion, and a little bit of garlic. Lamb loves garlic, so yeah. toss it all right in. And we don't need to add any oil or anything because we have this all beautiful this lamb fat. Yeah, beautiful. Just mix that all up, get all that fond up from the bottom. Found his flavor. Found his flavor. Shout out to Chef Erica. So again, we're not looking for color on the vegetables. We're right. just looking to sweat them out, soften them up a bit, and really release those aromas. Okay, well, the vegetables are Look going. Good. Yep. They are looking good, they smell good. They're starting to soften up. Let's go in with our kumquats. I think you're Mr. Kumquat today. Mr. Kumquat. There we go. Now, kumquats, like all fruit, they really, really love caramelization. So, we're gonna turn that on high, and we're gonna really get some color now on those, on those kumquats, just a little bit. And do people eat the peels from the kumquats? Oh yeah, pop them in whole, eat them whole. It's really beautiful, because they're a little sour, a little sweet, but when you eat the whole thing, you get that zest, and that is what really has that aroma and the flavor. So, beautiful. that's beautiful really color. where, yeah, they're gorgeous. So pretty much when all the fond is up, you know you're done for the most part, or? Usually yes, but because we do have some fruit and the, the kumquats in here, I'm gonna take it a little bit farther just to caramelize and really release some of those floral citrusy notes in here. Amazing. Because I want that to perfume the meat all the way through the braise. Okay. So our mirepoix, our kumquats, they've been caramelizing, sauteing, sweating. They smell amazing. We, got, we have a little bit of color in here. Time for the wine. Right, Some white wine. What's a YB Experience pro tip? Don't buy the cheapest wine possible for cooking. Buy something that's cook potentially with, cook drinkable. Cook with what you'll drink. What you drink. There you go, all the way in. All right, so what we'll do, slowly adding to that. And we might as well do the YB test. That's not bad wine, and I don't like white wine. So that's good. So how much are we going to reduce this by? We'll reduce it all the way, like 75, 80%. And then all, all the, the alcohol burns out and you're just going to add it. And then we're going to add our stock. Wow, you reduced all that wine. That's amazing. So Yeah, we reduced it almost all the way. White wine can be very acidic at times. So you really want to reduce it down. That way we get rid of some of those flavors. Just get that perfume of the white wine. It's time for the stock. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I'm going to let this go. And this will probably take a good five, 10 minutes to reduce as well, right? So we're not going to reduce this because this is going to be the braising liquid that's going to go in the oven. Excellent. So we're just going to let it kind of just get groovy in here. And then we're going to pop the meat in, into the oven, set and forget about four or five hours, about 325. You don't want to go too high. If your meat though is fully submerged, you can go a bit higher but 325 is perfect. Low and slow, let it do its thing. Let it just fall apart and cook properly. Okay, great. Okay, so our stock is coming up to, to temp. We just want to get that nice and warm and get it all mixed and incorporated with everything. And now it's time to put the lamb for a swim. Okay, let's go deep dive. 
We're gonna give them a little swim. We're gonna go flush side down. Flush side down. Flush side this down. Way. And you see that it's not completely covered. Like we mentioned earlier in regards to brazing, if you are fully submerged in liquid, then you can go at a little bit of a higher temp because you're not gonna risk burning it or, or anything. But my preferred for a braze, 325, 350 maximum, low and slow. Let, let it let do it its do thing, its thing. For, for a couple hours. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop a lid that's great. right on top. And then that's gonna go straight in the oven. And we'll see you in a few hours when this is ready. We are back. Back again. Four hours later. Lamb riblets have been braising. It smells the kumquats, the fruit. It smells amazing. Let's go. Let's grab them out. Okay. Oh my God, where's this smell o vision? Oh, that's amazing. I like to do the knife test whenever a braise comes out. Wow, butter. Butter. Butter, just straight that through. That is definitely, definitely Done. Okay. Wow. That just looks like a delicacy, which it is. As we mentioned before, you'll see that the bones are literally just falling right out. Okay. So next we're going to glaze. Okay. When glazing, you want to do multiple rounds. So we're going to brush on our glaze, which okay. is a kumquat and espalette barbecue sauce. Esplet is a mild chili, so we have some sweetness, a touch of heat, mild heat. It's really, really fun. So we're gonna glaze it, pop it in the oven. I have the oven set on broil, and we're gonna pop it in there for like 90 seconds to two minutes, take it out, do it again. With the cover on or off? Uncovered. Okay. We just wanna really build, build in that flavor. Yeah, so we're just gonna coat that up. He's a painter too, what an artist. He paints food. All right, I'm just doing a little sprinkling here of our espalette. Super strong, right? It's actually a mild chili, so it's not crazy, crazy spicy. And this is gonna go in the oven. Looks like we're good and ready. You can see really the layers, how they were built up on that. So here I have some more of these kumquats. These are just candied. So we're just going on, on here for a little sweet bite. The next here we have some uh, very, very thinly sliced and pickled jalapenos. The next for a little acid here, we're just gonna do some pickled onions. Okay, next we're gonna go back to that little espalette, that mild heat, just a little light sprinkling right over the top. I'm just gonna add some of these for some freshness and a little bit of herbaceousness and then for a little nuttiness we're just gonna grate some macadamia nuts these are just roasted oh. i don't know about you but i'm hungry that's a masterpiece i just gotta tell you this is just so beautiful looks flavor smell just amazing and there you have it, glazed lamb riblets using Prairie Street's lamb riblets. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. And notice that you didn't even give us a knife, and there's probably a really good reason for that. It's, we don't need one. You definitely don't. This is just butter. Boom! That's like 20 different flavors blowing up in my head at the same time. You, you get hit right away with that, with that kumquat, that right. sour, that sweet. You can get that kick, the espalette, the pickled jalapeno, the pickled onions, the acid, just parting your mouth. That is delicious. That is just amazing. But when you get to the lamb riblet itself, it is so tender. It's so buttery. I'll tell you something. I've been thinking about these lamb riblets for a year. We finally have them. They'll be on our website soon. This is one amazing product. With Finger one licking. fantastic chef. That's what we do here at Prairie Street. We bring you great meat and great method 
and you're a chef at home. Just watch our videos, order our product, look at our videos every Sunday at two o'clock, check out our Instagram, our shorts, check out the YV experience. This man is a global rock star. And we'll see you next time at 2 p.m. with another great video that's always fun to make. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you at next time. Fantastic. Excellent. Subscribe to our channel now and set your notifications so you don't miss our latest recipes and chef-led tutorials. Then head over to prairiestreet.co to shop for your next big meal.